this morning if you're coming. If you run so far. We're in the scriptures now, Matthew 7, verse 7 through 12. Ask and it will be given to you. Mm-hmm. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who acts receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you, Should have. if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him. Verse number 12. Oh, 12, I'm sorry. Verse 12. So in everything, do to others that what you would have them to do you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Okay. All right. There's a lot packed in these verses. Okay. Now, you remember what I shared with you before as he's talking to the scribes and Pharisees about the things that they thought they had a handle on, and he's giving them the business that they don't have it as they think they do. Okay? And so those references, you know, Somebody asks you for a fish, you give them a snake. Or those things has a direct hit to the scribes and Pharisees who were really focusing. You may remember one of the things that they really took pride in. There's, there's a couple. We, we, we talked about it a little bit. What, what, what was... One of their, their big to-dos. When the Pharisees showed up, what, w- what was they trying to do as far as they were trying to impress? Good, good start, good start. Trying to impress. And how did they go about trying to impress with the Outer, outer, feet yeah, 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 outer things. Standing on so the corners. So they fast, and yeah, exactly. They want to be seen of men. They want this is an outer situation. Okay, look at me. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were, they felt privileged, and they felt privileged because they they felt that you know, we're the most religious of anybody. There's nobody better than us. Okay, all right. Yeah, let's share share with you. In uh, last week in Matthew 23, you know, Jesus said, oh, these guys are sitting at the seat of Moses. They know what the words say. But what did he say? Remember, he said, don't, what did he say? don't do as they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, what they say, for the most part, is right. But their behaviors are opposite of what they say. Anybody know anybody like that? Keep your hand down. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's kind of, kind of the, kind of the, the, the people we're kind of dealing with here. Okay, so they thought they had the goods on everything in life, but it was all about show and outerness, or that's not a good word, but uh, external. Let's say just do that. Okay, the external things. Okay, uh, want to impress folk like that. This is what I do. I come to church all the time. Okay. I'm here every time the church door open. Okay. So because I do that, a certain, a certain level of esteem is given to get me because I'm always here. I'm always doing stuff. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. But what is what what is uh what does the Bible say? Man looks on the outward part, right? God looks where? In the heart. So, so I can fool you with all my outer stuff, right? Anybody can. But 
God knows your heart. Okay. All right. So, so we, 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 we want to be careful about being caught up in the externals. Okay. Because this is a spiritual journey. Okay. All right. So with all of that that's going on, then we've got some things that are happening. Now, uh, as Brother Allen has pointed out to us on, on many occasions, when you see the word heretofore or therefore, you have to ask, what is it what? Therefore. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, that's, a, that's a Brother Allen colloquialism. Okay. All right. Because that means... What does that also mean? You do what, Brother Allen? You go what? You have to go back. You go back and catch what's before. Okay? So the first seven verses of Matthew 7 are not part of our lesson. Okay? But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't, you shouldn't look at it to get the gist of 7 through 12. Okay? First seven verses are a whole bunch of negatives. Don't, 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 don't. First six verses. Then it gets to seven. Now we're talking about the positive. Here are the things that you need to be trying to do. And fix that. Okay? So that's, this is where, this is where we're at. Okay? Just for, just for a little bit of a, our background. Okay. So verse number six becomes now an interesting part of the next paragraph. Verse number six. Matthew 7, 6. Okay. And we're Do not, not going to give dogs. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may tr trample them under their feet and then turn and tear you to pieces. Okay, okay. So, here's a question. How do you know who are the dogs and who are the swine? Becomes a question. You don't have to answer right now. Okay. So this is where now verses 7 through 12 will help us. Okay, in our in our lesson text as well. Okay. All right. Because Brother Willie, could you explain the context of that verse? It may be self-explanatory, but it's not no, to me. No, no, no. <laughs> not to me either. <laughs> all right. So here's what you've got. All right. Um, when we connect it to the first seven verses of chapter seven, this is all about negative connotations. All right how we deal with people. This is a relationship situation we have here. Okay? Relationship with other folk and a relationship with the Lord. Okay? All right? So, in the previous verses, it's talking about the speck and the beam. Y'all remember that? Okay? All right? So, let's, 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 since you brought it up, it's okay. We can do it. The speck and the beam. What's the speck in the beam lesson? Five. Yeah, yeah. What's this? What's the lesson? What's that? What's that all about? That's all really the key to the first six verses. What is that about? Rejecting others and mm -hmm. um, not looking at yourself. Uh huh. First, you see yourself first yeah, before yeah. you look at others. Remember, the Pharisees always wanted to tell folk what to do, but they didn't want to do it themselves. And then they wanted to hold people accountable for what they told them. But they didn't hold themselves accountable. Does that make sense? Okay. So, so in the context, that's how we are, are able to interpret what the verse is saying. 
Okay. So, you got a big old log sticking out of your eye. Okay. <clears throat> and Sister Lucretia, somebody has a little speck. And what's the lesson behind all that? Hmm? Yeah, 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 yeah. Take care of yourself first, okay? Leave my speck alone. You walk around with a log coming out. It's just Jesus got a sense of humor here, okay? You run here dragging a big old log hanging out your face, you know? Yeah, yeah, and now I got a little something going down, Sister Gokia, and you're going to be, girl, you know, you need to be. I'm like, and the log is all the way across the street on you? Are you talking to me? Seriously? Okay. So that's kind of where, where we're at. Okay. All right. So we don't want to, he, he doesn't want, in the sense here, to waste. See, if, if these guys don't change their attitudes, it's like a waste. What am I going to give you pearls for, man? You're just going to mess it up. Okay, Peter, you don't really, you ain't trying to, you ain't really trying to understand me. You're wasting my, you're wasting time here, and you're wasting a resource here that's valuable. Okay, all right. Then you're gonna turn around and try to eat me up. Okay, you're gonna destroy what I give you, and then come after me. Okay, I remember. In the days when the girls used to borrow clothes from all the other girls, you know, hey Debbie, can I wear that blouse tomorrow? Y'all remember when y'all used to do that? Okay, I don't know if they still do or not. I know some girls come to school dressed all properly, and then they go into the bathroom and come out looking like something else. You know, nowadays you can't say anything to them. At least men can't, unless I know them. So, you know, I won't say nothing to them girls unless I know their mama. Okay, because if you say something to them, be, they're going to call Channel 19 on you. <laughs> Why are you looking at my girl like that? So, so we don't do that no more. But I remember a situation. The girls got into it. <laughs> you borrowed your, your blouse, Sister Debbie, and then messed it up, and then blaming you. It wasn't clean when you gave it to me. <laughs> okay, so you, you're fighting over stuff like that. Okay, you know, you could have took care of it better. You gave it to me that way, I gave it back to you. You ain't going to borrow nothing else. But that's kind of, you know, kind of a, a way they were going about it. So the Pharisees were those kind of people. Okay, all right. So... Richard, that's kind of where we're going here. They just, they just, man, I'm not trying to hear you. And so Jesus always was fighting with these guys. Okay? He gives them an invitation in verse number 13. Okay? It, this all tied into the lesson, so don't, don't, don't think we're just uh, chasing rabbits here. Look at verse 13 and 14. You know the verse. Chapter 7, 13, 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. Okay, listen, you, listen. If you guys want to get this, your act together, you got to do some changing here. Okay, all right? And right now, you need to understand that this is a narrow gate because everybody can't flow with this. Right now, you think you got it made, but you really don't. Okay? So understand that to be part of this kingdom, there's some things you got to change and fix. All right? And right now, y'all not willing to do it. Okay? And you got to straighten up. You got a lot of straightening up to do, okay? It's a small, it's just narrow gate. Broad is the way to lead it to what? Destruction. 
Now, all right, finish reading the verse. Verse 14. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Okay, so if you stay on this broad road, okay, that's a lesson for us too. If you stay on this road, the, 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 the standards that the world has set is going to lead you to destruction. Okay, God's way is strict, straight, and narrow. Okay, you can't do what you want to do here. And it says, a lot of people going to find that, Sister Mary? No. Few, right? Can't be that many folk because not everybody willing to straighten up like that. Okay? So he's talking to fair scribes and Pharisees, but he's, this is a lesson for us too, right? Okay? Got to, you have to be careful what standard you follow. And it's easy to do Romans 12, 1 and 2, conform to this world, right? But be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Fix how you're thinking. Fix so you can behave right. So as a man thinks what? In his heart. So is he, you know, he's going to behave the way he thinks. Okay? All right? Because most, almost everything we do, except for when we're real impulsive, there's some thought behind it. Okay? So if you're thinking about it, your behavior is going to follow your thoughts, right? So this is all the kind of stuff that's going on here. All right? So that's the kind of, that's the con, con, uh, context. So we understand the content of, of, of the following, following verses. Okay, question? Everybody okay? Just give, give you some background, help you understand where we're at. Okay, so Jesus is calling us, as the, as the first paragraph was read, to make sure our priority is straight, is right, is correct, okay, so that we can uh, be all that God wants us to be, all right? So, uh, ask for guidance. Ask for guidance. Ask for guidance, okay? If I'm trying to figure out how to handle Matthew 7 and verse number 6, what does verse number seven tell me I need to do? Yeah, it's not a trick question. Y'all know I, you know, y'all know I don't try to trick you. <laughs> I don't try to trick you. You know, it's not about that. So, if I'm if I have an issue with a particular situation, everything from verse number one to verse number through verse number six then I, I, if I'm struggling with that, I got to do what verse number seven says. Right? See that? First word, ask. Okay? I need to be able to decipher between how I'm going to handle this dog and swine situation, how I'm going to handle this beam and speck situation. I got to ask. Y'all thought it was something hocus pocus, didn't you? <laughs> no. Sister Mary? What we tend to do in the body is to read that verse 6, and many of us go carnal by thinking that Jesus is calling people dogs. He's not. He's giving a comparison to what dogs and other animals actually do with precious things. Mm -hmm. They put trample them under the foot. The swine go back and and go and bathe and go right and lay back down in the mud and the mire because that's what animals do. Mm -hmm. And he's telling us, his disciple, to get beyond the carnal side and look for the spiritual side. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Sister Mary, that's outstanding. 
okay? I dig a Snickers bar, you don't eat it. So, all right, okay, okay. So, that's, that's, that's critical, outstanding, okay? So, this, this, is the, this is how these verses are set up, okay? And remember, again, scribes and Pharisees were about what, you know, how, how they believe things to be in an external way. And this is a spiritual journey, okay? So, uh, we want to ask, okay? So, this gets into our prayer life, okay? Do we approach God when there's a crisis only? When something's wrong, we are quick to fall on our knees, shout hallelujah, and Lord help. When things seem to be going reasonably well, or really, really well, sometimes our behavior in our prayer life gets slacked. Y'all got quiet. Okay. Okay? And this is something that we have to keep constantly working on. Okay? That's not to use God like a spare tire. When I need it, Brother Allen, then I, I'll put it on. But if I don't need it, I'll just keep on going. Because I'm good. Until there's a crisis. Okay? As soon as your eyes open, asking, and petitions are coming out of our mouth while we're still laying in the bed before we feet hit the floor and put our house shoes on. But if everything's good, there is a tendency to be a little bit more lax. Okay? Yes, sir. I, I was going to say, I've been asking, like, since 2014, when sure I graduated college, for uh, God to make it possible for me and Tanch to move to a warmer climate because mm -hmm. uh, we're tired of the cold. And uh, it hasn't happened. Yeah. As of yet. But yeah. This isn't the type of asking that he's referring. He's this is more of a spiritual context, correct? As far as asking okay. to be closer to God. Okay, I, I love Brother Rich too. So, but you did go for two weeks. You went to Hawaii and didn't take nobody. So, anyway, y'all went there and had a good time. I thought you, you didn't bring me no hula hoops or hula thingies or nothing. You didn't bring me none of that stuff. Okay. Anyway, all right. So turn to verse. John, what do I want? I think 21. I think. Let's see. Let's see. First John 3. First John 3, I think 21. If when I get there, I think I can find it. Uh, 22. I think. For me, sometime I can remember. See, if I had, if I had uh, Richard's Bible, some stuff I wouldn't be able to find because I'm used to mine, Demetrius. I may not remember book, chapter, and verse, but I can remember three pages in the first John, top of the right hand, left hand corner, is somewhere, Janine, <laughs> in that vicinity. <laughs> okay. If I can't do book, chapter, I, I got an idea. But if I had Richard's Bible, it might be on the right side of the page. I'd be all crazy. Okay. So, uh, that's why you, you, you know, you won't, you know. I know y'all just, Brother Willie, you ought to know everything. You ought to know. I understand that. But sometimes I, I just have to remember where the section at and get close. <laughs> Anybody else like that? One of y'all, I know because I know all y'all got it all down. But just one of y'all can be with me. <laughs> okay, read verse 22. 1 John 3, 22. Somebody. Remember who is Brother Dale? Okay. And whatever we ask, we receive from him. Okay, stop. Whatever we ask, we receive from him. But you're asking the question. I've been asking this and that. What's the rest of the verse say? Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Okay, that's one criteria. 
Okay. So turn to 514. So Janine, go ahead before you. Yeah. Go ahead. And then, then be turning to 514. But we also have to know and understand that whatever we ask, it has to be, well, we, we need to ask all things according to his will. So, Brother Rich, it might not be his will that you go to Hawaii or a warmer climate because he wants you here. Yeah. So, okay. we have to ask, like I said, all things according to his will. Okay. So, that you just you just explained 1 John 5, 14, which is all right. Ain't nothing wrong with it. It's good. Spirit of the Lord, right? Okay. So, what does 1 John 5, 14 say? And, and this is the confidence that we have in him, <coughs> that if we ask anything according to his will. Stop. Ask anything according to who? His will. His will. Okay. And that's what Sister Janine just said. Okay. Now we can put book, chapter, and verse to that, right? Okay. And that's the thing. It's like we want our will to be his will. And, yeah. and it don't always line up that way. Yeah, yeah. No, no. That's right. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Rich want to go to Georgia, Rich, uh, Louisiana, Rich. but you go down there, Rich, the, the snakes that you're scared of right. will be in your uh, house every day. Yeah. So God, like, if, I, if Rich would go down, he's going to have a heart attack because the first snake he see crawling through his house, he's going to lose his mind. Okay? So he don't want you to go down there. Hey, I lived in California. Cockroaches were like the size of my yeah, hand. They say, there you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. Okay? Okay, so... There, there, there may some be, be some reason. Go ahead. Well, I have, to, I have to be a smart aleck and say, well, how does he know that we're not praying that he stays here? <laughs> <laughs> now you got Sister Tan's mad. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was thinking of something else. I was thinking of James 4. James 4, 3. When you ask, um, you have not because you ask amiss, and when, or you receive not because you ask amiss, and I was always telling my husband, stop asking that. It may not be God's will for us to move, even though we want to. Mm -hmm. um, that's our want. It may, yeah. it may not be his want for us. Okay. A uh, miss <coughs> means what? What does that mean, Brother Allen? What does asking a miss mean? We're asking what? Wrong motives. There you go. Wrong motives. Wrong motives. Okay. So your motive not may not be. Uh, what God, God wants. Okay, Sister Priscilla. It, it don't, I <coughs> learned that it don't necessarily mean no all the time. It could be not yes. Mm -hmm. You know, he could okay. be lining something up for you guys in Florida or Georgia or wherever that he needs work, but it, it may be just not yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it may not be no from God. It's just that he it's in his timing yes. that he does everything. Our timing is not his, but don't stop praying because you don't know when he going to line this up or if, but you still can pray mm -hmm. because you don't know what is, what is yes or no or not yet. That's right. That's right. And he could be lining up something for you to do in uh, Iceland. <laughs> you want to go to Georgia? Yeah, nah, you right. going to Iceland, bro? <laughs> Just get them. Well, you kind, you got two over there. Well, the the Bible tells us that God has us fitly joined together as it as it pleases Him. So, what God wants for us, uh, we have to desire too, which means. That, that thing about daily taking up your cross and, and humbling yourself and putting yourself, uh, uh, abasing yourself, and he'll lift you when it's time, mm -hmm. in his time. Yeah. So it, like Janine said, many times we ask for things that's not in God's will for us, but it will eventually come when God says it's time. In the meantime, we just need to keep our hand to the plow and keep working until he tells us it's time to go. Okay. I just don't want to be surfing on a wheelchair. Okay. <laughs> if you're in Iceland, you ain't going to have to worry about that. <laughs> you 
sister Diane has a <laughs> comment. And sometimes we always want to move and uh, go to these warmer climates, but we don't keep in count uh, or think about the spiritual uh, the spiritual edification that we'll be losing. Everywhere don't have the sound teaching that we have. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, so you you want to move, but you lose spiritually. So it's not always it's not always in the best interest to move for the heat climate, but you lose your soul. Mm -hmm. Cause you're not going to get that same teaching. You're going to mm -hmm. miss it. There's so many brothers and sisters who have left for other opportunities, but never prayed for that uh, spiritual ed uh, that spiritual edif edification and still that they keep getting that, and it's not there. Yeah, amen, amen. How many of you have gone to visit other congregations, and you get there, and you just be thanking the Lord that you part of the boulevard? Yeah, I got a few folks. Okay, I got a few folks. Okay, and 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 it makes you think. Well, you know what? I'm thankful that God has blessed me to be with this body of believers. Uh, I was one, one time was somewhere we were visiting, and one man did everything in the service. Read the song, did the communion, raised the did make sure he did everything. Because he was the only one. Only one. And I'm like, Lord Jesus, have mercy. Uh, Lord, send some some men to this place to help encourage this body of believers, okay? All right? So, Sister uh, Diane, fantastic point. Outstanding, okay? She might go to Iceland and start a church with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, you just never know. <laughs> you know, you, so, so you, no, you, you may not get to Georgia, but you might be <laughs> at Iceland, start a congregation there. Souls be, need to be saved in the cold, too. Go ahead. Um, <coughs> perspective over the years that um, it's kind of bothered me that um, people seem to retreat down to more comfortable situations uh, looking for where it's easier. Um, you kind of look at that this is an area where that needs a lot of more workers and mm -hmm. people tend to retreat down to where there are lots of workers <laughs> Um, so uh, I've seen that where congregation has been on the verge of having elders and then those guys move. They retire and then move down south. So I guess it's uh, one, one thing is we're, you know, where, where are we needed? And it is having an attitude of serving uh, and not, you know, what's, you know, what I would like, but where can God use me? Amen. And that's where it's all at. So, Richard, we, we keep praying. <laughs> and, and it might be a not yet, or it might be Iceland, or it might be somewhere else. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So, the, 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 there's an interesting statement in verse number 12, the last part of the 12, verse 12, Matthew 7, 12. That's interesting. And, um, you know, it's a lot to it but I just want you to know it's there, okay? So the last part of verse 12, somebody read that. Matthew 7, 12. Yeah, this is the last part of that verse. There so, oh. Go ahead. Therefore, whatever you want men to do, to you do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Okay, that's critical. <laughs> that's critical. Why do you think it's critical? That that part of the verse. Why is that significant? Remember we're talking about relationships, doing right by people, making sure we're good. Got a hand there, boy. That's critical. It's important because uh, Jesus wants you to treat everyone like how he treated everyone. Okay. No matter how they do you, it's important that you remain a, a Christian and be that light and an example and do good no matter how hard it is. Do good to people even because you want people to do good to you even though half the time they don't, you still have to continue to do good because that's what Jesus did. So here's, here's where we're at, what we call the golden rule, right? Doing to others as you'd have them doing to you, okay? Good, excellent. Where's the law of the prophets coming in at here? 
What's that about? Where this is in the law and the prophets. Where does that come in at? What's that about? Uh, Jesus says that the law and the prophets cover that whole Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And it's based, if I'm able to love the way he tells me, especially others, in and out of the body, I've covered that whole Old Testament law if I'm able to love and lay down my life for my friend. And he's talking about that that love factor there. That's a, that's a, that's a, so. What what's the what's the greatest commandment? Somebody find that. Love what? Okay. And then what is the next verse? What is the next? The second one is what? And what does it say? How does it end? If somebody find that, I think. It, it's, it ends kind of like verse 12 here. Everybody got it? Brother Allen, you got it. Where's that at? Greatest command, first command. Love our neighbor as ourself, and then there's something that says behind it. What does it say? Ain't nobody found it? <laughs> okay. Okay, what does it say? Did it say something about the prophets? Okay, so, anybody got it? None of you have it? Okay. Let me see if I can get it. What does it say? Wait, 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 somebody, somebody, somebody. Wait, 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 go ahead. Who, who got it? What does it say? Okay. Um, Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven 37 through 40. It says, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That's it. That's it. Now, what is that, Matthew what? 22, 37 through 40. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. And in Romans 13, in verse number 10, love, Romans 13, verse 10, love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Okay, so all the prophets talked about the relationship. So when we go back to what we call the Ten Commandments, it's, when you look at at least the latter half of those, it's about dealing with our, our neighbor, right? Okay, we don't covet, right? We don't steal. You know, remember those? I know we don't talk about it much. So if I don't covet anything from you, Brother Richard, okay, if I'm not going to steal anything from Brother Worship, okay, my relationship with him is going to be a good thing, okay, because I'm treating him right. I'm not taking nothing from him. I'm not coveting something. Demetrius has that I don't have. My in other words, when you look at all of those commandments, particularly the latter parts, it's talking about how we deal with each other. Okay? So when this is the fulfillment of the law, we're talking about the love that Mary talked about, encompassing love the Lord and love your neighbor as yourself. If I do that, Sister Donna, I'm not going to steal from you. I'm not going to covet from you. Is everybody follow, follow me? Follow me? Okay. All right. So I'm going to be doing the things that are necessary to enhance our relationships, not to take away from them. Okay. So don't, don't get the, the commandments twisted like we don't need those anymore because we do. <laughs> okay. 
in the sense of our relationship to one another. Does that make sense? Everybody okay? Everybody follow? Okay, yes. As we asked our little kids in the little lamb class, who is our neighbor? Mm -hmm. Everybody is our neighbor. Yeah. Who we come in contact with. There you go. So we can't just be nice to the people in, in our congregation, which we should. Everybody don't do that either. But it means that we got to love everybody and treat everybody who we come in contact with like Jesus would. And you don't have to tell them you're a Christian. They already know. If you're, ch if you're walking in the spirit, that's the way you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Amen. We don't have to tell nobody nothing. They already know something different about you. That's it. So where is that, where is that uh, story found when that question was asked, who is our neighbor? Come on. For two snicker bars, somebody come up with it. Where's that story? Where is that, where's the story? When, 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 okay, it was a, it's a parable. There you go. Good Samaritan. Okay. You give your snicker bars to you, Connie. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. But, but don't we learn a lot from the kids? Don't we? Man, you don't, 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 you better listen to them children. Because they teach us a whole lot. Anyway, uh, that was the question, wasn't it? Remember? Who's our neighbor? And this man that got beat up and uh, good Samaritan take care of him. Okay. So whoever comes your way is in need of something, right? That's where we're at. That makes sense? We're good. Okay. So the seek part. Okay. Seek. Seek. Okay. What does seek imply or intimate or suggest? You're looking for something. Searching for something. There you go. All of, all of those words. Desire something. Okay. You're asking, but you're working toward that what you're asking. Okay. Right? That makes sense? We're good? So there's, you're going to see one big tie-in when we get to the knock part. Okay. So we ask. We seek, and then we're going to knock. Shannon, you got your hand up? Okay. 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 She was, she was looking for the truth because as she read her Bible, no place she went measured up to what she read. And she was seeking, diligently seeking when she wandered into the back back uh, parking lot here and ran into Mary Smith and was not going to come in because she didn't have a Bible. Mm -hmm. And Mary said she would share her Bible with her. Don't go away. I remember that. And from that, she became a member of the church and she died in the body. Mm -hmm. She was diligently seeking God. Yeah. She had gotten fed up with everything she'd learned growing up. I went to Catholic school with her. She knew the Catholic faith was not right. And so she started looking for something that matched what she was reading. And in her seeking and her diligently asking and seeking, God allowed her to find him. He's never hiding from us. Mm -hmm. You just got to look for him. He's always there. And for anybody that's looking for him, he's not hiding from them. Yeah. Amen. I remember, I remember that story. And I didn't know that was her until you just brought it back up. But I do remember that, that day. And, and he, she asked the question, is it too late to come in? And I don't have a button. Mary happened. Isn't that something? Mary was going to her car. She wasn't playing hooky. She was going to the car for something. And boom, the Lord sent that woman right to her. Bam. And Mary was moved to ask her, how can I help you? Or what do you need? Well, I'd like to come come to the church. I don't have a Bible. Is it too late? <laughs> no. I got one. I got a Bible. And we got some in the pews, too, don't we? But we'll figure this thing out. Okay, beautiful. That's a tremendous story, okay? Outstanding. I remember that. Amen. Praise God. And it's, isn't it something? Had she not come in and Mary had not reached out to her, that woman would not have been saved and would have died and gone to hell. Isn't that something? Okay? So... <clears throat> Ah, uh, somebody find the story of the persistent widow. Let me
Remember that story? That parable? Somebody find it. I got I to let y'all do some work. Okay. Yeah. Somebody find this, this, that story. Or the persistent one. Everybody remember that one? Hmm? If you can't find it, do you remember it? Okay. Fourth. All right. Somebody find it. Give me the, the Bible study, 21st century Bible study. Okay. Nobody wants to be heard asking Google and Siri for it, but. <laughs> Luke 18. <laughs> Luke 18. That's it. That's it. Okay. So let's read that. That's the knocking connection. Okay. Isn't that one called a persistent widow? Is that the one? Okay. All right. So let's read a few verses. Who's that? Who's that? Demetrius, did you have that? Who's that? Let's read that. Somebody uh, get him a mic, please. I think we're at first. It's the first one, isn't it? Yeah, one through, I think it uh, starts, starts out with that. Yeah. Uh, Luke 18, 1. Yes. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men are out to always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto them, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, least by her. Okay, trouble her. What, what, she, what is she doing? And just getting on his nerves. <laughs> Keep on going. Finish it up. Um, I will avenge her, least by her, continually coming, she will weary me. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. She, if I don't get this woman what she wants, she's going to keep on coming back. <laughs> I'm about tired of this woman messing with me. Okay, the point is what? We should do what? Keep, which way yet? Keep praying. Okay. And, 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 and if the Lord is willing... Uh, he'll answer. He will hear you and answer. Okay, so that's that's kind of so that's that's the connection here to the lesson. We are asking, we're seeking, and we're persistent in what we do. Now, when I do. All